Yo, what's happening everybody? King GBL here, and welcome back to a brand new Goodbye Like video. Today I'm going to be showcasing my meta review, and roughly about 10 good teams for you to use in the Great League. One thing that you have to keep in mind is that the first week of the Great League is complete Wild Wild West, right? We have different Pokemon that are buffed, people are using different picks, but I think now we're into the business side of the season, we're going to see a much more settled meta, and I think we're going to see a lot more carbings, and many more hardcore meta teams. In this video, we're going to discuss what the actual meta is going to be in the Great League, and I'll show you 10 teams that I like. Bear in mind that these are not the best teams, right? Because there's no such thing as the best team. And also, please keep in mind that I will miss out some of like the more popular meta teams. It's my goal in this video to showcase teams that I like and I've played with. Because to be honest with you, I don't want to talk about teams I don't know anything about. The teams I'm going to show you are teams I can give you insight on. And for the most part are teams that I've used this season or quite recently, which I can give you some insight on. If you enjoyed this video and you want me to make more, please leave me some feedback in the comment section down below about the video. Drop a like. And if you're not subscribed yet, about 60% of you guys are not subscribed. Please do so today, it's absolutely free, and it really helps me grow this channel, so big thank you to everybody who's been doing so, and without any further ado, let's hop into the meta review. Alright guys, let's hop into the meta review, we're on pvpoke.com, which is the best website for checking out uh, what the meta is, and you can check for different teams and stuff on here, but we're going to look at the meta. Rank 1, meta cham, it's very obvious, it's been on most teams in the Pokemon Go uh, World Championships and Regionals. Carbink number 2, this Pokemon is a Pokemon I expect to see a lot more this season. Registeel is as strong as ever, if not stronger than ever because Psychic got a slight nerf, meaning that in the Zero Shield, it can probably beat Metacham a little bit more comfortably. Lickitung is now back to top meta again, with the absence of Noctile. The main difference we're seeing here is that Noctile and Lantern are not in the top 10 or 20 anymore. I think Lantern here is actually now ranked 53, and Noctile's 100 and something, 125. So I think the main Pokemon in this Go Battle League meta are Metacham, Carbink, Registeel, Lickitung. Gligar is going to be the main flyer, I think also Pelipper and uh, Mantine are both fine picks, if not great picks, for flyers in this meta. Altaria, I would love to say that it's good, but unfortunately, just the Sky Attack nerf is just a little bit too much to uh, make this Pokemon viable anymore. It, it would still have a unique role, but not quite as good as the ones I mentioned. So we're basically going to have a game of cat and mouse here. We're going to have Carbink. People are going to be chasing it down. What beats Carbink? Metacham kind of does okay against it, right? That It's just a great generalist Pokemon. That's why Metacham's so good. Registeel basically walls it. Lickitung can beat it, and Lickitung can actually beat Metacham as well. That is what's so good about this Pokemon. You're seeing that you're losing in the one shield scenario. However, if you shield up a Psychic, you basically take this matchup, right? You're seeing in this match, in order for Metacham to win, they need to throw Ice Punch and then land the Psychic. So that's something to keep in mind. Lickitung, super strong pick. And then of course we have things like Swampert. The reason Swampert is ranked so high this season is because of course it's super spammy, but it beats the Carbink, it beats the Registeel. It does lose to the Lickitung because, of course, it can get one-shot by the uh, Power Whip. Having the grass coverage on Lickitung is what makes it so good. And, of course, it's super bulky with the uh, the Body Slam. Depending on what you want your Swampert to do, you can go for Shadow or Non-Shadow. Shadow Swampert was always good because it could two-shot the Noctile. With the absence of Noctile, you may actually want the extra bulk that you can get with regular Swampert. So you'll just have to have a look at that and see what benefits your team composition a little bit more. Polyrath Shadow. Very, very interesting pick. We haven't had it in Grunts for quite some time. I expect to see it coming back this season at some point, but to be honest with you, I think it's just a worse meta gem. Super strong Pokemon though, and in this current meta, where we're hunting for Steel types and Carbings, Polyrath could be a very good pick. Gligar is an amazing Pokemon, guys. Um, the one good thing about non-Shadow Gligar is the fact that, as you can see here, we get the key win of meta gem in the One Shield. I believe this does not win the One Shield. Yeah, so this loses the One Shield right here, because it does not survive the Ice Punch comfortably enough, or at all. I haven't actually quite looked at it, but I know that for a fact. That, of course, the Ice Punch goes through, and that will take out the Gligar. I've personally been using a pretty bad AV normal Gligar. Still very good. We have Steelix here, which of course is in the top 10. However, I just don't think it's quite as good as Galarian Stunfisk or Registeel as a traditional um, as a traditional Steel type. This Pokemon is not to be used like Galarian Stunfisk. This Pokemon is generally here to be an absolute nuisance. And as you can see here, we're beating ground types with this thing. You would think with Mudshot, it would be a favorable matchup for Stunfisk. However, a lot of it is very bait dependent, and Steelix is just an amazing generalist in this meta. Machamp's always ranked highly because of course it'll beat all of these uh, water types and steel types, and of course normals in the meta. It'll lose pretty hard to things like Metacham, and I'm not even convinced it beats Carbink. Cresselia here I think is a fantastic pick for this season. If you look at what this is looking to beat, right? So you've got the grass coverage, which is very vital for the Great League. This is going to beat Machamp, which you're not going to see that much of. You have a lot of neutral play against Gligar. It's going to beat Polyrath, it's going to beat Swampert, it's going to lose to Lickitung, however you can put for a lot of damage. And of course it has very good matchups against Carbink and Medi. Cresselia, definitely an amazing pick for the season. It basically is one of them Pokemon that beats the top ranked Pokemon, right? 
and it beats a lot of the stuff that's going to be hunting for carbing, such as the ground types and the waters that you're going to see quite a lot of uh, potentially hunting for carbing. Even though nerfed, Sunvisk is still really good and serves a really good purpose in this meta. Much stronger against Lantern since the Spark nerf. Scrafty, just pay no heed to this Pokemon, it's never going to be good. This Pokemon depends on baits so much. Um, you're assuming that the opponent's going to shield a power up punch. You know, like it's, it's just not going to happen most of the time, to be honest with you. Dubwool, pretty decent CF swap. I think slightly overhyped, but definitely has a very good place in this meta. Spams off a lot of damage with Body Slams and Payback and can be quite a good one. Quagsire Shadow, amazing Pokemon with Mud Bomb and Stone Edge. Again, very nice generalist Pokemon. And like you see here, it's just such a hard wall to these Steels and Rock types. Sableye now back in the meta, of course, with Noctile gone. However, it has Carbing to contend with. Pelipper and Mantine, two of the best flyers now. And I think these are very, very strong, especially Pelipper. Vigoroth, the king of limited metas, will always be in around the top. And apart from that, guys, that is the main meta. I think the main things that you want to focus on are Metacham, Carbink, Registeel, Lickitung, Swampert, Gligar. I don't think we worry about Polyrath here. Steelix definitely can be awkward. Cresselia, if people have them traded, will be very, very good and awkward to deal with. And then, of course, Sableye. We have these two uh, flying water types. And then looking at some stuff outside of the box, and what is actually quite good about Great League at the moment is there are so many viable Pokemon, unlike what we're playing currently in the Psychic Cup. Jellicent has a unique role in this meta. Of course, beating Metacham and the Steel types and has a lot of play against Carbink. Even though it says it loses here, you can put in a lot of damage and you probably win in the twos, to be fair. Lorant is the most highly ranked grass type. I still think Trevenant and Venusaur are better. Defense Deox is probably a little bit underrated. Does well against Metacham. Can put in a lot of damage against Lickitung, even though the Licks are super effective. Pretty uncomfortable for DD, but can do fine there. Does well against Swampert. Can put in a lot of damage against Gligar, Registeel. Defense Deox is definitely a very good Pokemon. And if you pair that Pokemon with two Pokemon in the back, that are a weak to counter. Basically, Deoxys is always used in teams to defend Pokemon in the back that are weak to counter. Alolan Sandslash could be very good. However, it's a little bit tricky against, of course, Metacham. Loses to Sableye, Lantern, Swampert. Not very, very good scenes here for uh, Sandslash at the moment. Can lose to Galarian Stunfisk, depending on if you can call a beat or not. However, it's very good against the grass types, Azumarill, which I think is going to be a great pick this season. And Sandslash, I think, still is a very fun Pokemon and good to use. Azumarill here, in my opinion, is the most underrated. Azumarill and uh, Diggersby, in fact, are probably the two most underrated Pokemon in this list. This Pokemon is amazing. Does really well against Sableye. I think the problem is it's on the wrong move set on PvP Poke. It should be on Hydro Pump. If you put this Pokemon on Hydro Pump, it gets a much higher rating. You don't have any coverage. Unfortunately, you don't have any coverage against the Grass types, but I think you can live with that to have the extra coverage for Steelix, Galarian Stunfisk, Diggersby, Carbink. Of course, you're beating Metacham already. You're beating Alolan Ninetales, you're beating Swamperts, you're beating Altarius if they're there, you're beating Charizards, Bastiodons, um, Gligar Nun Shadow as well. This Pokemon is extremely good and I think this is a Zoomerill season to shine. I highly recommend checking out this Pokemon and it's going to be in a couple of our teams. Diggersby once again, it's an amazing Pokemon. If you land a Hyper Beam on Metacham, you can actually flip swap on it, which is pretty insane. Beats Lantern, Stunvisk, Carbink, Sableye, Registeel, some amazing wins. If you land a Hyper Beam on Gligar, you can look to take it out. Really, really good Pokemon. Gliscor, basically a B-Tech Gligar at this point. Surfetched, really good with the double counter teams. Really good safe swap, Leaf Blade coverage, amazing. Warrior Shadow, not quite as good as Alone and Ninetales here in my opinion, and Frostlass, which we will get into. Ninetales could be very strong this season. As you're seeing, it gets some very good wins against Metacham, Sableye, Gligar. Doesn't do very well against Registeel and Lantern, which is why I personally prefer the Frostlass. Of course, with a Fairy Typing and Ice Typing, it's neutral damage to counter, whereas Frostlass still resists them. And that's why I like it. Chestnut here, very unique in its role. And um, those double counter backlines or double fighting backlines. Chestnut can be a real nuisance and a huge core breaker for many teams. Lantern here coming in at 53. This Pokemon is still going to be the focal point of the meta as well. This Pokemon is, is vastly underrated. Probably the most underrated Pokemon to be fair. Still super strong. And the thing that's better about this Pokemon this season, it actually does lose to Carbing somehow. Um, even though you're a water type, but I think if you take that into the twos, you most likely win that match. You can put on a lot of damage against Gligars, and I think Lantern's looking very good. Golbat's a good Pokemon, Meganium's a good Pokemon, Dragonite's a good Pokemon. Uh, Dugong, I think, is sort of closer to meta than 62, but some of these Pokemon are just a little bit off meta. Umbreon, still a fantastic safe swap, and can beat Metacham in the Zero Shield scenario if you get ahead in energy. Or land the last resort. Frostlass, I do want to I do want to pay some respect to this Pokemon because I think it's a great pick for the season. Gligars are just absolutely everywhere. Even though Pelipper and Mantine are water types, you still land the neutral Shadow Bolts or Avalanches, and I think Frostlass is an amazing pick for the season. I I've seen tons of Defense Deoxys teams and Medicham teams, and Frostlass just core breaks so many teams there. 
Even against Lickitung, one of its worst matchups, two Avalanches comes very close to KOing, and that's an amazing Pokemon. Apart from that, guys, we have to talk about Trevenant. I think it's very, very strong. Even though it's ranked uh, 86.2 and rank 79, right? Do not let this fool you. This is a super strong pick for the season. Toxapex beats Metacham and Carbink and Azumarill, which are going to be some very, very common Pokemon. So Toxapex, I think, is a very unique and good core breaker in this meta. And apart from that, guys, we're coming into more Spice picks and more slightly off meta picks. However, in the Great League, I think if they're above 80, they're definitely playable. You're seeing things like Galissapod, Noctowl down here, Whimsicott, even Galarian Weezing. These are playable Pokemon, but they just need a team built around them that they can succeed in. There are some very good Pokemon in the lower ranks, like Wigglytuff as well, but I think we've covered the vast majority of the meta. Metacham, Carbink, Registeel, Lickitung, I think Swampert and Gligar, of course, Steelix, Lantern, Trevenant, Azumarill, Diggersby. I think those are going to be your main Pokemon, Defense Deoxys as well. And with that being said, guys, let's hop into our best teams. Alright guys, hopping into Team 1 and Team 2 here, actually. We have Trevenant, Registeel, and Carbink. I used this team last season. As you can see, it gets a very good scorecard. The thing that's good about this team is that Trevenant basically covers the weaknesses of these two, and these two cover the weaknesses of Trevenant. Of course, Trevenant being weak to flying, these two cover the flying weakness very well, and of course, um, Registeel and Carbink both do fine against Sableye. A lot of the Pokemon that will be hunting for these two Pokemon in the back, such as Diggersby, Swampert, all of the basic grass types and ground types will be losing to Trevenant, and all of the flyers and dark types generally don't have a good time against these two. So this is an amazing team, a little bit RPS, but it is a very, very strong team and expected to do very well. As for Core Breakers, you can see that there aren't really many. Of course, you have some Pokemon that are going to beat your back Pokemon, but like I said, Trevenant deals with almost everything that our back Pokemon lose to. Dunspar seems like a funny one, but I wouldn't really expect to see it that much. I think Gligar is going to be your most tricky Pokemon. However, if you land a Zap Cannon, get a debuff, it's going to be looking absolutely fine. And I think this team is one of the best carving teams you can possibly run. I posted Team 1 last season, and a lot of people actually changed it to Metacham. So Metacham here, as you can see, this is basically the BBML team. I think these are the top three Pokemon. Again, very similar. However, I think you do have some more core breakers. Again, it's just really a Gligar. The good thing about running it with Metacham is that it's a little bit less RPS because it has such amazing coverage. However, this season with way less Noctals, I think I like the Trevenant team quite a lot, but this one is definitely going to be super strong and most likely a lot more common than the Trevenant team. Moving on to team three here, we've got Dragonair, we've got Metacham, and we've got Carbink. Dragonair does need to be Shadow, um, otherwise it's not quite as effective for what we're looking to use it for here. B for coverage, A for bulk, A for safety, A for consistency. I don't always pay too much attention to the scorecard by the way, but it is nice to see that. Dragonair can beat the vast majority of things in the lead, um, in the two shield scenario, and you look to basically win lead with Dragonair and align your Metacham and your Carbink onto the uh, back Pokemon, and that should put you in a very good position. If you have these Pokemon lined up correctly, they basically beat everything right. Carbink lined up onto the correct Pokemon is almost a guaranteed win for it, and it's similar with Metacham. Looking at some core breakers here, Gligar looks like it would be quite tricky. You could try to win this in the twos, hopefully the opponent lets the move go, or worst comes to worst, you can look to swap into Metacham. As you can see, Gligar only wins by the skin of its teeth, so if this thing throws in bad timing, you actually will be able to win this. As you can see, Gligar loses in the zeros, so you can play this out for the shield advantage if you want to, or you can of course look to uh, try to you know go down a shield and win. I think with this team, going down a shield is absolutely no problem. So once you get your Metacham lined up and your Carbank lined up, this team should go to town, and I think this is a very, very strong team. Alright guys, hopping into Team 4. This is a team that helped me get to Legend last season. We've got Alolan Sandslash, Cresselia, and Azumarill. Basically weak to Metacham in the lead, and super strong against Metacham in the back. So as you can see here, Metacham will beat the Alolan Sandslash, but it will lose pretty hard to Azumarill and Cresselia, especially with the Psychic nerf in Azumarill's case. All three Pokemon beat Carbink, and you're seeing here that Lickitung and Registeel can be quite uh, a bit of an issue for this team. However, the charge moves are resisted against Sandslash. You can definitely put in a good chip against Lickitung, and again, um, Cresselia and both Azumarill can put in a lot of damage. So it's going to be a very tricky Pokemon to be fair, but I think a team effort will be able to take that down. Uh, likewise with Registeel, if you start shielding up, you'll be able to take it with Lolan Sandslash, so you stay on that lead of course, but if you do end up lined up against it in the back, Hydro Pumps will do substantial damage to it with Azumarill. We're seeing Core Breakers here, uh, basically a couple of normal types, Registeel. Again, you're going to have to dance around them a little bit. Um, Lickitung with the Power Whip can be kind of tricky, however, it doesn't really enjoy uh, like two play roughs or a Hydro Pump if you get it quite low with, let's say, Sand Slash and swap into Azu. Um, again, Greedent, super spammy, doesn't do a ton of damage, and you can look to spam off some heavy hitting moves with Azu. Lorantis Meganium, I wouldn't worry about these too much. I, I don't actually think that they're going to beat Sand Slash. 
and of course Lorenzis will have to debuff itself. So pretty decent scorecard. Pelipper and Deoxys here could both be quite tricky, but I generally don't think the matchup between Azumarill and Deoxys is absolutely terrible. So again, if you're seeing an absolute ton of Medicham, this team could work very well for you if they're in the back. Again, Medicham teams will typically have something that Sandslash can do very well against, so I think this team could be quite fun and strong, and I guess it really just depends on how many carbings we see, because this team just completely destroys it, it has nowhere to go against us here. Likewise with Gligar, just nowhere to go. So team 5, we have Pelipper, Registeel and Diggersby. Pelipper lead, there to deal with your Medichams, it actually can do very well against Gligar as well. Um, Registeel on the safe swap to draw out any potential Pokemon um, that you don't want your Diggersby to see, and then Diggersby in the closing position with Mudshot, Scorching Sands and Hyper Beam. As you can see, very bulky, good coverage, good safety, good consistency. We're seeing here the Pelipper deals with the Medicham, and the back two Pokemon kind of struggle against it. However, in the Zero Shield scenario, Registeel can do perfectly fine. Your two back Pokemon destroy Carbink, and Carbink itself actually doesn't have the greatest time against Pelipper. Of course, it will be a winning matchup. In the two shield scenario, the match between Pelipper and Registeel gets very, very close. However, you would prefer to line it up on one of your back Pokemon. Uh, Lickitung has a pretty close win against Pelipper. Your back two Pokemon do very well against Lickitung. Uh, once again, Pelipper beats Swambert. Your back two Pokemon lose to it. So this team seems to have very, very good synergy. Some core breakers we're seeing is going to be Trevenant, Como O, and Meganium up at the top here. Um, Metacham can be a little bit tricky, of course. Gligar can be tricky because they, they can beat your backline. So it can be a little bit alignment dependent, but that's where Registeel comes in. It's really good at getting a shield off a Pokemon. It gets a shield off most things in the meta, right? So I think with Registeel, you're just absolutely chilling. Um, you get a shield advantage, come back in with the Pelipper, get a farm down, swap out if necessary, up a shield. You should be able to land a Hyper Beam with uh, Diggersby. So I think this team is going to be super strong, and it's one that I highly recommend for the new season. Hopping into the next team, this is Lantern Double Ghost. This is a team I'm a big fan of. Um, you have Sibylai and Trevenant in the back to cover the weaknesses of Lantern and vice versa. Lanterns are good against Flyers. Um, Sibylai and Trevenant are good against Minicham. And a few other things that um, Lantern can struggle against. PV Poke is not a big fan of this team, but I do think it is a good team. Um, especially this season with maybe Carbink around. Technically here, you're losing to it with Spark Lantern. If you go for Water Gun, which I don't think I recommend, um, you can look to beat that very comfortably. As per usual, Lickitung is looking quite tricky, but you can land a Thunderbolt. A Power Whip will not one-shot you. Um, you can take it out with two returns, or a return and a Foul Play. will get it very, very low. If you successfully shield up a Power Whip on any of these two matchups here, you should be perfectly fine. Trevenant, I think it takes a bit free Seed Bombs to KO, so it is very, very bad for Trevenant. Um, with Registeel here, um, you beat this with your whole team, basically. Unless the opponent has got a really good IV Reggie. Um, in the two shield and one shield, I believe, uh, Sableye loses if the Registeel has got uh, super good IVs, so it's not a terrible match for Sableye. Your whole team can do very well against Gligar, even though this is a very dominant win for Gligar against Trevenant. Uh, Shadow Balls are no joke and they will definitely add up. Um, with Swampert, be it dependent matchup against Lantern, this is assuming that they go for Hydro Cannon and then go for Earthquake. Um, so if you're landing like two Surfs on this Pokemon, especially the Shadow actually, the one thing that's worse about Shadow Swampert is that it dies to two Surfs from Lantern, right? So it's a pretty bait dependent matchup, but both Sableye and uh, Trevenant can deal with it. It's saying here that Steelix will beat your whole team. I'm assuming that they're building up to the Earthquake and beating the uh, the move. I honestly don't think that's too bad, and I think you should be fine with Lantern, uh, just even a combination of these Pokemon. If you want to stay in for a minute, land a Surf, um, take the first breaking swipe and then swap into Sableye. I think you should be fine. We're doing really well against Stunfisk, and overall I actually really like this team. PV Poke, like I said, does not like it, but uh, I think it's a good team. Lickitung and Umbreon are definitely the two biggest problems. And with Umbreon, Lantern does absolutely fine against it. You beat it in the two shielding scenario, as you can see, because the uh, the moves are adding up. Surf and Thunderbolt are practically the same energy efficiency. It's slightly different, but not enough to make much of a difference. So if they do let a Surf go, you're perfectly fine. You're still getting some damage free, and I do quite like this team. Our next team here is Dragon or Shadow in the lead, Lickitung and Azu. This is basically a win lead uh, RPS the backline kind of team again, similar to the one with uh, Metacham and Carbink. So similar concept, PV Poke actually seems to quite like the same, B for coverage, A for bulk, B for safety, and A for consistency. You sort of struggle a little bit against Carbink and Medi, but all of your Pokemon can do fine against it. Um, Carbink is so slow to the move that you don't really have to worry about it that much. Um, Dragonar can spam out some Aqua Tails, Lickitung, and of course with Hydro Pump, Azu destroys it. I don't think I've ever made a team that's strong against Lickitung, so maybe I'll have to do a triple counter team at some point. Spoiler alert, we don't have that. Uh, as for Registeel, uh, Dragonar can beat this in the two shield. Lickitung... Ah, uh, it's a little, definitely a little bit tricky, and with Azu, uh, the thing about that is you can go for Hydro Pump. So, Registeel, if you get a, a Registeel lead, you probably stay in and double shield it, to be fair. Um, your whole team beats Gligar, which is nice. Your whole team beats Swambird. So, if you're seeing Gligar is absolutely everywhere, which you are likely to see, um, this team is very good against it. 
you your whole team beats Sableye, so that basically their safe swap has got nowhere to go. Guaranteed to take switch against Sableye. Your whole team beats Quagsire. There's definitely a few holes in this team, and we'll have a look at it here. Um, Registeel, like I said, we can deal with it. Noctowl is not a bad matchup for any of these Pokemon, to be honest with you. Um, Ariados, okay. Magnazone. I mean, if you lose to Magnazone, you just have to chalk it down as, you know, well done to the opponent for running Magnazone. Um, Metacham, again, it's not that terrible. And now there's Carbink. So I think this is a pretty strong and consistent team. And I do think it's something that will serve you quite well. You're actually seeing here as well that Diggersby is um, basically getting beat by your whole team. You're beating uh, Deoxys's as well. I, I very much like this team and I think if you can win Switch, you win game basically. Now this next team is a team that I'm going to call my signature team. Um, it's a team I came up with this season and I think it could be very strong. I'm not sure if this is a known team or a common team, but I think it makes a lot of sense. We've got Frostlass, which deals with your Deoxys's, Metachams and so on, and completely destroys Gligar. And then Lickitung, which on the safe swap can take switch against Medi and Diggersby, um, which is just an amazing closer. Let's have a look, PV Poke, ooh, A for bulk, A for consistency, A for safety, D for coverage though, again it's more of an ABB cell team. Uh, Lickitung, like I said, can beat uh, Medicham, um, very very bad matchup against Carbink, Diggersby and Lickitung. Well Diggersby destroys Carbink and Lickitung can do fine. For once in our lives we actually have two answers to Lickitung, but you'll see here that um, if you're ahead in energy a little bit with uh, Frostlass, let's put this in the zeros. Let's put this in the zeros, and we will give Frostlass one Powder Snow. Lickitung actually loses. If you land two Avalanches, you beat Lickitung, which is amazing. So not a bad matchup whatsoever. Registeel, again, it's, it's a tricky match. I would assume if you shield up a little bit, you can look to uh, definitely win this matchup. Because Shadow Balls are just completely wrecked. Okay, so Registeel does still win. Um, and that's assuming you're beating Avalanches as well. Even if you draw out Registeel with Lickitung, and you know get some, some damage free on it, they cannot one-shot you. They'll, they'll have to throw two moves no matter what. Which will give you the chance to get off, like, let's say, a free body slams or something like that. Which will get it, you know, into roughly, like, 50% health. You can then come back in with your Frost Lass, um, land a Shadow Ball, and probably take it out. So it's not the end of the world. As I said, we're destroying Gligar. Um, Swampert, pretty close matchup here. I think it's actually an IV dependent matchup. Steelix, pretty awkward as well. Again, Diggersby destroys it. Licky Tongue is a fine time. So Licky Tongue, again, it's just a generalist, and it does super well against most things. Um, once again with Sableye. You know, landing a Shadow Ball will just basically put that uh, match to bed for you. So, it's not the end of the world. We're beating the Flyers, we're beating Cresselia. I think I really like this team, and that's why I've coined it as my uh, signature team. You guys can let me know if you've seen this team before, but um, it's a team I came up with uh, a couple of weeks ago. If Double's your core breaker, you're fine. Scrafty, Machamp, Mandibuzz, Polyrath. I'm perfectly fine with this. Um, I think your whole team is going to play against these Pokemon. None of these Pokemon are just completely unplayable. Um, Machamp beating Frostlass is a bit of a funny one. But yeah, I highly recommend this team. I think I've seen this team used before with just Metacham in the lead. You're just seeing some different core breakers. You're, you're losing to Flyers pretty heavily. I do highly recommend this team with uh, Frostlass though. And I think Frostlass is such an underrated pick for the season. Our next team here is Gligar, Lickitung and Lantern. This is an Axon team. And this is more of a balanced team, right? So it's basically an ABC style team, three different Pokemon that do three different things. You have a Flyer in the front, I can deal with Steel types. You have an, a neutral Pokemon against Metacham, and a lot of the meta. And you have Lantern, which deals with Flyers. So very, very good team. Um, as you can see, it's just very, very balanced. I'm not too sure if he was running it with Shadow Gligar or Normal Gligar. You can use Shadow or Normal Gligar. I'm not sure which one its Axon was using. However, I think the match with Metacham is very valuable, and probably Carbink as well. The Rock, flow, the rock Froze will be doing less damage. Um, as you're seeing here, we have two answers to Reggie, technically free Pokemon that can do fine against it. Our whole team beats Gligar, um, we can do fine against Swampert. Our whole team is doing very well against Defense Deoxys, um, I think it's just overall a very good balanced team. Our core breakers here seem to be like dark types, uh, such as Guzzlord, which you'd never really see, Umbreon. We seem to be quite weak to Umbreon quite often, uh, Munchlax is not a very common Pokemon, Dragonair, not super common. Um, Linoon again, another dark type, and uh, Carbink looks to be quite tricky. But this team will have a lot of play against basically everything, and you may just have to play for, like, farm downs and things like that. I do really like this team. It's a very balanced team, and if you're not a huge fan of ABB style teams, this could be a good team for you to try. And finally, guys, we have a Deoxys team. A Deoxys and any two Pokemon of you choosing that are weak to counter is a perfectly fine line. If you want to go Steelix and Sandslash, if you want to go Registeel and Sandslash, if you want to go for Greedent and Diggersby, all absolutely fine. Deoxys basically beats any fighter, including Metacham, and PV Poke seems to quite like this team as well. Again, uh, Steelix is a really good pivot because you can draw out any potential fighters in the back or any potential mud boys and then look to clean them up with Deoxys. Your back two Pokemon are beating Carbink. We actually can beat Lickitung with this team, which is great as well. Again, it's a little bit tricky for Deoxys, but very winnable nonetheless. You can do very well against Registeel with your whole team, practically. Um, Steelix, it seems to have quite a rough matchup. 
If you played out in the zeros, you can look to go for an Earthquake. Won't be the worst thing in the world. And again, if you shield up with Sand Slash, you can beat Reggie. Again with Gligar, I think if you were to shield up here, you can definitely take this Pokemon out. Yeah, so in the two shield, you destroy Gligar, which is perfectly fine. You've basically great answers to all of the flyers in the meta. And having a look at the core breakers, Swambert, Diggersby, S Cavalier, uh, Talon Flame. Of course, we'll find Talon Flames uh, with this team, but generally speaking, Swambert's not the end of the world. And again, I believe if you put this in the two shield against Steelix, I think you can do perfectly fine here. So Swambert is only just about winning this in the twos. So by the looks of things, if you get free Dragon Tails through, so if you swap into Steelix, the opponent gets a little bit greedy and comes into Swampert a little bit late, you definitely can flip that matchup. So a little bit tricky, but by the time you've debuffed it two or three times, it's not really an issue at that point. Um, Deoxys can do fine against Diggersby, like I said, and uh, Sand Slash, not a very good matchup for that at all, but you can land uh, super effective Ice Punches, so definitely not the end of the world. Really cool team, and like I said guys, you can swap these in for whatever Pokemon you want. You can go for an Umbreon team, which as we were seeing, is core breaking an absolute ton of different teams in the meta. It's completely up to you what you're trying to sort of go for here. I actually do think Umbreon, I probably should have put it on a team. I think it is quite a unique core breaker this season. I think you would probably want actually Lickitung instead of Diggersby if you want to be strong against uh, ghost types in the back. But you can basically just put Deoxys as your main focal point of the team and then look to use two Pokemon to defend it in the back. So very strong team. Deoxys double normal, Deoxys double steel or double ice even can work very, very well. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for my best teams. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please hit that like button. It took quite some time to put this video together and subscribe to the channel if you want to see some gameplay with these teams, fully breaking each team down. And of course, any other teams that I wish to showcase and any new Pokemon that come out, I'll be showcasing as much as possible on the channel. And I want to say a big thank you for the support. Um, also on our Discord, we're doing a lot of tournaments and actually a Discord league. So something similar to a football league. We're going to be playing matches against each other and it's going to be a ton of fun in there. Uh, feel free to join up in the description down below. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll catch you all next time.